Thanks for waiting and welcome to Anadot's webinar on our all new forecasting tool, Autonomous Forecast. Thank you so much for joining us. We've been working really hard on this new product and we wanted you, our customers, to be the first to hear about it before its release. So you're getting the first ever access to Autonomous Forecast. Getting accurate and continuous time series forecasts is incredibly difficult, as you all know. And in recent years, we've seen that there's been a lot of academic research focused on the subject, all of which is confirming that it is challenging, but it's clearly a highly valuable capability for any organization. Companies can use forecasting to anticipate demand in order to adjust the supply accordingly. Um, they can use the solution to forecast key growth indicators of a company for better growth planning. So there's a lot of use cases which we'll cover today. Um, we're currently running this product in closed beta and we're giving you, our customers, priority in getting on board. So that's exciting. So talk to us if you want to join. You can also apply directly on our website on the forecast page. There's a form there. Um, so the person here at Anadot leading this exciting new initiative is our co-founder and chief data scientist, Dr. Ira Cohen. Um, who's going to present the solution in use cases in a few seconds. So in, in the meantime, while he's presenting, feel free to write in the chat any questions you have, um, anything you want clarified, and we will not only answer it during the presentation, but we'll make time at the end for a few minutes for Q&A. Okay, so without further ado, here is Dr. Ira Cohen. Thank you, Debbie. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, so as Debbie mentioned, we we're very excited about this new uh, capability in Anadoc, and I wanted to take the time today to explain what it is and how it works and how you can actually use it. So just a quick reminder to, to all of you what Anadoc is about. We use AI to constantly monitor and correlate business performance uh, and provide real-time alerts and now forecasts so you can lower the time to detection and improve business operations in general. So uh, Anadot's mission is making BI autonomous. And as part of that, we're basically rolling out, we, we have two different uh, autonomous analytics services, one around business monitoring. So telling you what's happening right now. And this is the service that's, uh, that, that you've been using uh, for detecting anomalies, helping you find out the root cause. Uh, and now this new capability is around business forecast. Uh, forecasting has three pillars to it. Uh, the first step is to actually be able to forecast the future. And the next two pillars, which are not part of this release, are an analysis of what if, letting you understand what if, and doing optimization. So, Ira, um, for those of people out there who are wondering, probably like I am, what comprises the what if and optimization stages that we're still working on? All right, so, so basically forecasting, uh, forecasting something gives you uh, what, it's going, what, we, what the algorithm believe it's going to be. Uh, but in a lot of cases, you want to ask the question uh, of what will happen to the forecast if you change something. For example, I'm forecasting a certain amount of demand or purchases of products. What will happen if we decide to do a sales campaign? Uh, what, how does that change the forecast? This is the what if analysis. And the optimization part is in cases where uh, there are control knobs that can be uh, tuned, uh, what should be those knobs to meet a certain, uh, a a certain forecast uh, a target? So I want to reach a certain revenue. Can you optimize my marketing campaign spend or sales or anything that relates that can impact uh, that demand? How can I change it uh, uh, and, and give uh, basically the optimization gives you an automatic way to select those. Now, in terms of uh, this, for, in terms of our, you know, our entire philosophy as a, as a product, uh, we, we provide all of these with no coding requirements, no data scientist required. Everything is automatic machine learning. So it's not something that we have to tune on our side and providing continuous and real time, both forecasting and anomaly. So, of course, uh, you, you, you know you are a customer. We want to show some of our other customers in different uh, uh, industries that are using Anadot today uh, uh, for the anomaly detection. And we already have several that are, we're working with uh, as part of this beta uh, for doing the forecasting uh, as well. And some are already on the platform. And we're hoping to get uh, anybody who's interested in forecasting 
uh, on the platform as well. And you, as, as Debbie mentioned, we're in closed beta and uh, all of our customers have first rights to join that beta. So let's go and, and talk about the forecasting capability right now. So the, the whole idea of the forecasting is to give a, a, an AI powered forecasting with a turnkey exper experience, which means you don't need to know anything about machine learning, you just need to know what you want to forecast and how far you want to forecast it. So before we dive into it, I wanted to discuss a few of the use cases that we've heard uh, in, the, in the recent months that, uh, uh, that help where forecasting helps. So the first part is, is forecasting demand. And, and basically forecasting demand depends on the vertical. It could be different types of demand. So if you're an e-commerce or retail, you want to predict sales of each product, for example. Uh, so you can make sure you have enough inventory and, or even if you have to order it, you, you have time to do that. Uh, ride sharing, predicting ride demand so you can have enough drivers on the road to meet that demand and not too many drivers so you don't waste resources. Uh, fintech companies can predict payments to ensure you have enough funds in your accounts. Uh, customer support, knowing how many support calls that we're going to have the next week can help you determine how many support agents uh, you need on board at any point in time in the future. And capacity planning in general. Now, um, How far, just wondering, how far ahead can you forecast? Right, so, so in general, our forecasting is not, uh, the capability is not uh, uh, limited. You can determine any forecast horizon you want. Uh, but we have seen that for, for demand forecasting, the typical forecast horizon is hours to days ahead, up to weeks ahead. Um, and, uh, and it's not the same for every type of forecast. So that leads into the next uh, use, the next main category of use cases, which are growth forecasting. Here, uh, you might want to forecast your revenue uh, to ensure to ensure you have enough your budget on is on track, and if you need to make adjustment, you adjust it. Conversions uh, from premiums to premiums, churn prediction, churn rate prediction, uh, spend prediction. Uh, all of these are key uh, performance indicator of a company that you might have some actions to meet those. Okay, well, uh, I have a question here. I'm actually wondering what's with some of the, the beta, you know, customers that we've been, we've been working with, what's the typical ask? Like how far ahead do these users typically need to know their KPIs ahead of time? Right, so, so as opposed to the demand forecasting and growth forecasting, typically it's at least a month ahead, uh, quarter ahead, and sometimes a year ahead. Those are the typical uh, things we see and the time scale usually needed is daily, maybe weekly, but typically it's not hourly uh, time scales as opposed okay. to the demand forecast. Okay, that makes sense. So what are the main considerations to get accurate forecasts? So forecasting can be done in a lot of different ways, simple ways, more complicated ways, uh, but to get, an, to get the best accuracy out of forecasting, you want to leverage a few things. You want to have your algorithms leverage several things. First, uh, leverage any influencing metrics and events. So in this graph here, you see how Black Friday, that event, that's an event, it's a special day. If you're in e-commerce, Black Friday is a very special day uh, that typically shows a spike. Now, if the forecasting algorithm knows that these events are, are related, then it can predict these spikes on Black Friday, Cyber Monday. If it doesn't know about them, then there's, there's very little chance any forecasting algorithm can do it accurately. That's the first part. Second part is, is uh, identifying in, in the data, especially in the historical data when the algorithms need to train, that there are anomalies and treating them in a, in a special way, taking them into account uh, differently than any other normal points and because we know how to detect anomalies really well this is part of the pre-processing that we do for any data that comes in the last aspect of it is there are many different types of forecasting algorithms that may be more accurate or less accurate on particular data and it's hard to know uh, which ones to use so uh, because it's hard to know we just we don't choose we actually apply a lot of different machine learning deep learning algorithms uh, to this data, to the same data, and then combine them as an ensemble to give the best possible forecast accuracy for that data um, based on these algorithms. 
So the benefits of this uh, product is really giving you autonomous machine learning capability for forecasting. So there's a fully auto automated machine learning pipeline for this forecasting. Uh, uh, it, we're using the most advanced forecasting algorithms out there and we modified some of some to be even better. Uh, and it's business ready. So no data scientists, no code involved. Uh, these are the main benefits. So a uh, question we typically get asked around around this segment is, uh, so can you actually, so for our existing customers, can you actually use the existing data that's being streamed into Anadot to create forecasts? Yes, absolutely. So, so basically, if the data you want to forecast is already streamed into Anadot as part of the metrics for anomaly detection, then we just can use the same metrics. Everything stays the same. Great. Okay. So, um, Let's describe the product components overall, then I'll show a demo, and after that, I'll describe each step uh, individually. So in general, the whole process starts with getting the data into the Anodot account, um, and these are time series and event data using the same collectors that we have. Then, uh, as a user, you would select which metrics you want to forecast. Uh, and from that point on, everything is done automatically. So there's a step for training uh, the forecast models, uh, which uses histor historical data, uh, doing data preparation, training the models, and after they're trained, uh, uh, there is a forecast model exists for that task, which continuously forecasts as new data comes in, and all is streamed back into the Anadote system to be visualized in dashboards, uh, to be downloaded via as CSVs, uh, an API for downloading the data, and also uh, is in future releases, we'll also let you create alerts on the forecasts themselves in cases where you know it must meet a target or must not uh, pass some threshold, and you want to be notified if the forecast is going to pass that threshold. So let's do a demo. Um, and show you how, how this looks like. So as I mentioned, this is basically metrics inside of Anadot, the same way. And this is a forecast task for, this is a demo data. Uh, forecast task is to actually predict the demand on bike rental. So think of a bike rental company. Uh, it could be a scooter rental company or any type of uh, company that, uh, uh, that, that rents anything. This is a bike rental company. And they want to forecast uh, the demand 48 hours in advance. So what are we seeing here? Basically, this is the dashboard that you're used to seeing in Anadot. In the dashboard, we created a tile that shows the actual metric uh, that you want forecast. Here, the task is to forecast bike rentals per country uh, 48 hours in advance. And this is the historical data, uh, last month worth of data up until now. And uh, here you, in the dotted line, you actually see the forecast into the future uh, 48 hours in advance based on the horizon that was uh, chosen. So this is the basic output. This can be downloaded as CSVs, exported as CSVs, uh, exported via an API. Uh, and, and basically, this is the normal use of forecasts. Now, to give you confidence in the forecast, we actually also enable, to sh enable showing uh, in the historical lifespan of this forecast, how did it do compared to the actual? Uh, so every point here, the, dotted, the, the solid line is the actual measurement that were done on January 15th, for example, at 5 p.m., while the dotted line is the forecast that was done on that same time 48 hours before. So you can see here it's, it's very, it does it very accurately uh, in this data point, and you can actually compare it visually for yourself. But using the same functions that you use, that we, can, that, that we have in the platform, you can actually even measure some aggregate uh, errors, error measures or accuracy measures. In this case, um, this shows that over the last month, the, the error was 12.81%. So we were typically, 12, on average, 12% 12, 12 away from the actual value. Uh, and this gives you the error for uh, bike rentals in Canada um, in absolute terms. So the average error is 148 bike rentals, and that accounts for about 12% overall. You can actually also visualize it over time and see for every point in time what was the error in absolute terms and in, percentage, in percentages. If we want to show it with, you know, showing the direction, so 
uh, sometimes it's important to know which one, which errors were down, which errors were up. So this is with the actual sign. And all of this was done with the functions that we have already in the system. Uh, so it's, it's fairly easy. Now, uh, how do you actually, how did I get this visualization in terms of the product? Uh, when we go into metrics, you can see the query that I created to bring up the forecast. So every forecast task uh, uh, gets a name uh, assigned to it when, when it's created. And you search for it by doing add forecast and then the name of the forecast you want to do. And if you want to filter it by country, for example, then you filter it uh, additionally to, to see just one metric. If you want to see all countries, I can remove this filter, and I will see a lot of graphs with all the countries involved and all their forecasts. Let me bring this back so we can see just one country. So this is basically the demo. This is the output that you see. And now the question is how do we get to this output? And this is what I'm going to describe next. All right, so let's go over the, all of the steps of how do we actually create each individual forecast. So the first step is connecting your data. Of course, if the data is already in an dot, it's already in an dot. But uh, if, if it's new data that's not already in, in the account, just connect to it with our data, collect, the data collectors. All of them are available for it. There is nothing different from uh, what you do for the anomaly detection part. The second step, which is really the, the main step that's required from any user is to define the forecast task. So there are a few, the few things that we need as inputs for each forecast task. First, which metrics do you want to forecast? So if I want to forecast number of rides per country, I select it uh, and, and it could be one metric, it could be a lot of permutation of the same metric. Uh, in the case that I showed you, the forecast task involved all the countries that this bike rental company was in. The second step is to define what is the horizon, the forecast horizon you want, 48 hours in advance, a week in advance, a week forward, four weeks forward, a year forward. This is, this is we need that definition. And then the time scale that you need it in. Today, we currently support a daily time scale and hourly time scale for forecasts. So basically, you can forecast 48, 48 hours in advance at an hourly time scale, which means you will get uh, 48 data points forecasted in the future. If you want to forecast a week in advance at daily time scale, then you'll get seven points forecasted into, into the future. Well, so wait, so how much historical data, data, how much historical data do you need to get uh, a good forecast? So, so best practice for it, there is no one answer that is correct. The best practice for it, if you're doing daily uh, time scales, then usually two years uh, will be good, good value to start, a good history to start from. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing hourly, then probably six months is enough. Uh, of course, uh, if there are special events that are in history that, we should, that, this, that the algorithm should learn, like holidays, then we need at least two years for that, even if it's a hourly time scale. Okay, and that being said, how would you recommend that people define the horizon? Like, what's the best practice for that, and what's the time scale that you need? Right. So, so it depends on the use case and what you and, and the, basically you want to choose the horizon not too far from 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 current time, uh, but far enough so you have enough time to take the actions that you need. So, okay. uh, if you're doing demand forecasting and it takes you. Uh, two weeks to fill up your inventory or you need two weeks in advance to to take an action choose that but don't choose six weeks if you don't need six weeks because the farther you go out the the less accurate the forecast becomes by definition any forecasting method if you forecast farther ahead it will get less and less accurate so you don't want it to be too far uh, the same for time scale. If you're if you don't need hourly time scale forecasts, if you don't need it hour by hour, then it's better not to choose hour by hour. Better to choose daily. It will improve the accuracy as you aggregate things up. Now, uh, so th this answers the question. Another inputs that are optional uh, mm -hmm. to the forecast task are: Are there any supporting or influencing measures? Any supporting events or influence? Basically, supporting Factors. events is an yeah. event that can help the model forecasts better, like the holidays, like Black Friday, or it could be an internal event, like a sale event, uh, uh, anything that you would know a priori uh, before a forecast is made. So that, these are optional. Um, 
and those tend to help a lot with the forecasting. You don't have to be very specific here. You can choose a lot of them, even if you don't know that they can help, uh, and the algorithms will figure it out automatically. In the future releases, basically we're going to select these support, these influencing support measures and events based on the data that's in the account already, uh, and that will help uh, improve things even. That will alleviate the need to define these supporting measures, unless they're not in the system already. All right, so from now on, everything is done automatically, and uh, this, is, this is where the magic happens. Uh, so the first step is to actually prepare the data for these algorithms, these forecasting algorithms. And there is a lot of data preparation involved uh, that's done automatically based on some of, some of our, is our uh, IP, some of it is, is uh, best practices for, for, for these algorithms. Uh, the, the, the things that are relevant, uh, that are special in terms of uh, what we do, in terms of our IP, are the understanding which of these optional supporting measures and events can, uh, can actually influence the, the forecast. Uh, so that's done automatically and their preparation is done automatically. And also, uh, uh, we're doing some anomaly-based pre-processing. So we're finding all the anomalies in the historical data and then treating them in a special way, uh, uh, sometimes ignoring them, sometimes using them. But this is part of, uh, uh, this is part of the IP. Uh, an additional, additional feature that we're going to have in the future uh, is actually correlate this forecast task with publicly available data, for example, weather information. So we plan to actually integrate public data into Anadot uh, that will be available for any customer and for these forecast tasks. And then we can automatically uh, choose some of the public data that can help with uh, improve the forecasting accuracy. What we would love to hear from you, and especially the ones that would become beta customers, what type of public data do you, they think uh, can be useful? What, what type of public data they've seen in the past, you've seen in the past that can help uh, understand your data better? Uh, and we'll prioritize which, which, uh, which ones of these public streams we'll choose based on this input. So please provide it. The fourth step is now the training step. So we're taking a lot of history, two years, three years, six months, whatever is available, and now we're going to train these forecasting models based on the history. So the training phase basically looks at the history, splits it into a, a training set and a validation set, um, then trains all of these different models. And we have here LSTM, which is a deep learning uh, model, Profit, which is an open source from, my, from, from Facebook, linear temporal models. These are a lot of the, our, our models that do anomaly detection. We transform them so they can do forecasting, hybrid recurrent neural networks. And actually we're adding more and more algorithms to this pool of algorithms because there is never uh, one algorithm that wins all the time. Uh, so because we know that, we, we run a lot of different forecasting algorithms and then we ensemble them, which we check whether combining them into a single forecast is better than any individual one and then choose the best option out of all possible options that we see for each metric that we need to forecast. That ensures that, uh, uh, that at least based on these models that we have, you will get the most accurate forecast possible on this data. Once we have, once we trained it on historical data, then we actually uh, uh, deploy this forecast model uh, to do continuous forecasting. Uh, and it's basically going to work every time there's new data point coming in for these metrics that needs to be forecasted, it will automatically create the next forecast for, uh, for, for all these metrics. Then these forecasts are pushed into Anadot as, uh, as an object that is metrics. As you saw, you, the way you search for it, you write this at forecast and give it the forecast name, and then you can find them and visualize them, and then consume it via the alerts, via reports, via um, any uh, 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 the API, any one of these. So the seventh step is basically another step that, uh, that is done automatically as part of the continuous forecasting. Uh, because this is forecasting and eventually we are going to get the actual data point, we can, our system automatically reviews the accuracy of these models and, and based on the expected that we saw in the training phase. 
And if we discover that the model is starting to perform worse than, than, than it, uh, it should, based on the training phase, it goes to automatic retraining uh, and, and re-data preparation because something may have changed in the data and maybe the models need to be refreshed and retrained. So this is done again automatic, completely automatically uh, as far as the user is concerned. Uh, lastly, we have, uh, basically this is for those who are interested, this is our architecture slide, high level architecture slide of how we do this, uh, for how the system works. Uh, we're using Cassandra as a time series database. We're using Cassandra to, to persist all these models. Uh, we are using uh, uh, various um, machine learning uh, frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch, our Anodot SDK, uh, profit is in Python. All are combined, so so everything, all the all the running of it is completely um, completely transparent for you from you as a user, uh, and it runs automatically. It does the training. There is a training module, stores the model, and then there is a forecasting model which does does the continuous uh, forecast all the time. Basically, uh, the only difference between these two modules is the validator module that, that continuously checks. Uh, the forecasting models to see whether they have to be retrained or not. So I think at this point we're ready for question and answers. Uh, so let's open it up. We'll give you guys a couple or a chance to write in any questions you may have. Feel free to write them in. Um, and if not, uh, we hope you reach out on the website to, to apply for the beta. Yeah, or contact your <laughs> customer success, much easier. Yeah, uh, customer well. success manager or send us an email, direct email, whichever you, way you want. We're happy to, uh, to bring you into this closed beta phase uh, and, and, and give you the forecasts you need for your own business. All right, so if there are no questions, I think that we are we're done for today. And uh, if you need a special demo for yourself, we're gonna send this webinar as a video. Yeah. Uh, if you wanna review it later. And of course, if you have more questions about the data science, the algorithms, we'll be happy to, to do that as well, uh, based on your need. Yeah, just reach out to your customer success uh, representative. And thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Yes.